Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be discussing some important questions related to the chapter motion. In the earlier videos, we have completed every topic related to this chapter, and now it's time to do some questions. So I'll be giving you some questions. You can pause them and then solve it, and then you can check the answer while uh, I'll be doing it on the board. So let's check it out. Let's do the first question. So this is the first question. It says, draw a single graph showing non-uniform acceleration. constant velocity and uniform retardation respectively so that means you have to draw all these quantities in one single graph now if you remember the topic graph which we studied earlier you have to learn or remember which type of graph gives the value of acceleration as a kaun sa graph hai jiska slope hame acceleration deta hai so you will get it that we have to make a velocity time graph okay now we have to make a velocity time graph let's make it this is the velocity time graph now i told you in the earlier videos always remember that time will be on the x axis so this is the uh, axis for time and this is the axis for velocity so now we have made a graph of velocity versus time now let's see how we'll fit those quantities in this graph the first quantity is non uniform acceleration now i have already told you that a non straight line represents non uniformity and the slope of this graph velocity time gives us the value of acceleration so that means a curved graph like this okay a curved graph that means this is a non straight line represents non uniform acceleration okay this uh, line represents non uniform acceleration now let's make constant velocity constant velocity means that the time is increasing that the, but the value of velocity is not changing so a straight line parallel to the x axis on velocity time graph represents constant velocity now there is one more name for this term constant velocity can you guess it now if you have correctly guess it the answer is zero acceleration so this is the line which is showing constant velocity and now the next quantity which we need to make is uniform retardation always remember that the graph of retardation is declining and it is uniform so we have already learned na that a straight line represents uniformity so a straight line moving in the downward direction towards the x axis shows uniform retardation so we have involved all the three quantities in one single graph let's move on to the next question the next question is is it possible to have constant speed but variable velocity now we have uh, earlier studied some topic and in that topic we actually got one condition where the speed is constant but the velocity is variable can you guess that topic or can you guess that condition first of all you need to answer is it possible or not so the answer of this question is yes it is possible it is possible to have constant speed but variable velocity and the answer of this question is in case of uniform circular motion okay so in case of uniform circular motion we can actually have constant speed but we will move on to the next question the question is a train travels from station a to station b in 2 hours and travels 60 kilometers it returns back to a in 3 hours find the average speed and average velocity so there are simple formulas for average speed and average velocity let's check it out whether you are able to do it or not you can actually pause this video and then solve it and when you are done solving just play and check whether you have done it correctly or not now let's do it now let's find the uh, average speed first so the formula for average speed the formula for average speed is total distance total distance upon total time so this is the simple formula for average speed which is total distance upon total time now you just have to substitute the value it says total distance now we have two distances here once when the body goes from a to b that is 60 km and again the body comes back from b to a again 60 km so the total distance is 60 plus 60 and what is the total time Uh, in the first case it took 2 hours to go from a to b and in the second case the body took 3 hours to come back so that means the total time is 2 plus 3 now the value is 
divided by 5. Now you can simplify it and you will get the answer 24. Now 24 is the magnitude. Can you tell me what will be the unit here? If you are saying kilometer per hour, if you are saying kilometer per hour, then that is the correct answer. 24 kilometer per hour is the correct answer for average speed. Now let's see what is the value of average velocity here. Let's see what is the value of average velocity. Now if you remember, there is one formula for average velocity which says average velocity is equal to total displacement. Average velocity is equal to total displacement upon total time. Total displacement upon total time. Now can you tell me what is the displacement here? The displacement here is actually zero because the body is again returning to the same point from which it started. So that means if the displacement is zero, the value for this entire fraction, that is the value of average velocity is zero. Okay. I hope you all have done it uh, correctly. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question says, the next question says, let's see what is the next question. The next question is differentiate between speed and velocity. Okay, differentiate between speed and velocity. I guess you should be able to do this very smoothly because we have uh, studied it a number of times what is speed and what is velocity. So first of all you need to tell the definition. Speed can be defined as the rate of change of motion and what is velocity? It is actually the rate of change of motion in a particular direction. The next point says that speed is actually a scalar quantity and velocity is actually a vector quantity. Okay. So in this way you can easily differentiate what is speed and what is velocity. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is convert 54 km per hour to meter per second and 20 meter per second to kilometer per hour. Okay, so in the earlier videos we have understood what is the trick to remember how to convert kilometer per hour to meter per second and how to convert meter per second to kilometer per hour. Let's uh, and discuss that trick again. The trick is if you have to convert kilometer per hour to meter per second, okay? So you just need to remember two numbers. One number is 5 and the other number is 18. One number is fine, the other number is 18. 5 is a small number, 18 is a big number. Ek number chota hai, ek number bada. Ab ab ye dekho, when we move from a body value to a choti value, okay? When we move from a body value to a choti value, we multiply the number with choti value upon body value. Okay. Again remember when you are going from body value to choti value, you have to multiply it with choti value upon body value. So that means if any number is given in kilometer per hour, you have to multiply it with 5 by 18. So the number which is given here is actually 54. Now you can simply cancel out 18, 3 times is 54 and 3, 5 times is 15. So the answer is 15 meter per second. In a very similar way, if you have to convert meter per second to kilometer per hour, if you have to convert meter per second to kilometer per hour, just say we are, we are moving from choti value to a body value. So you have to multiply it with body value upon choti value, 18 upon 5. Now what is the number which is provided in the question? That is actually 20. So you have to solve this, 5, 4 times is 20. 18, 18 multiplied by 4 is 72 kilometer per hour. So this is the answer of this question. I hope you all have done it correctly. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question is differentiate between uniform speed and non-uniform speed. Now we have discussed it multiple times. What is uniformity? What is non-uniformity? Let's again differentiate uniform speed and non-uniform speed. Uniform speed is when a body travels equal distance in equal interval of time. Okay, just remember these two words. Equal distance in equal interval of time. So the speed which is attained is uniform speed. And at the same time, what is non-uniform speed? If a body travels unequal distances. 
in equal interval of time so the speed is termed as non uniform speed again a very easy but a conceptual question if you remember these keywords you'll be able to understand everything okay so this question is done let's move on to the next question the question is a body starts from rest and reaches a velocity of 20 meter per second in 5 seconds calculate the distance traveled in this time period okay so you can note down this question you can pause for a while and try solving this numerical and then continue with me by checking your answer okay i'm doing it let's check it out so the body uh, the question says that a body starts from rest so that means what is the initial velocity the initial velocity is 0 meter per second and is there any final velocity given in the question it says reaches a velocity of 20 meter per second so the final velocity is 20 meter per second we also have the time period which is equals to 5 second now it is given in the question that we have to calculate the distance traveled by the body this is what we need to calculate now if you remember the second equation of motion it says that s is equals to ut plus half at square okay so just check it out how many values from this equation we actually know we know the value of u we know the value of t we have to calculate this value of acceleration first so once we have calculated the value of acceleration then we'll put it in this equation so let's calculate acceleration first acceleration is equals to v minus u upon t that means v is 20 minus 0 upon Time time is five seconds. So that means twenty minus zero upon five, twenty upon five. That means four. Okay, four meter per second square is the acceleration which we have calculated. Now you have to substitute this value of acceleration in the previous equation. Let's see what was the previous equation. The previous equation was s is equals to s is equals to u t plus half a t square. Okay. Let's substitute the value. The value of u is zero, so that means this entire value will be zero. Substituting the values here, one upon two. The value of acceleration is four, and the value of time that is five whole square. So this means that two ones are two, two twos are four. Two multiplied by twenty-five, which is equals to fifty. And what will be the unit? Meter, because we are calculating distance. So the answer of this numerical is distance is. 50 meter so you can actually see that we are not getting the direct direct value of distance first we have to calculate acceleration and then we have to substitute the value in the question now let's move on to the next question the next question is draw the graph for uniform and non uniform speed okay draw the graph of uniform and non uniform speed now if you remember the first thing which we need to keep in mind while making a graph is what are the values which will be available on the x and y axis now if you have to make a graph for speed so can you tell me what is the value which we have to use in x and y axis x axis ka to sabko pata hoga ki x axis pe time hota hai maine aapko bataya bhi tha is duniya mein kuch bhi ho jaye kuch bhi zameen phat ke uske niche se volcano nikal aaye pakistan ka pradhan mantri jo biden ban jaye india mein britishers phir se aa jaye kuch bhi ho jaye Time will always be on the x-axis. So, if you have to make a graph for uniform and non-uniform speed, then you have to remember that time will be on the x-axis and distance will be on the y-axis. This is the uh, graph which we need to make. Now, let's uh, uh, draw the graph for uniform and non-uniform speed. As we already discussed, that a straight line. represents uniformity so this is straight line is for uniform speed okay and if we draw a non straight line you can also call this a curved line so this line or this graph shows the graph for non uniform speed so this was a simple question related to graph let's move on to the next question of the day the next question is explain why uniform circular motion is considered as एक्सेलरेटेड मोशन यूनिफॉर्म सर्कुलर मोशन को हम एक्सेलरेटेड मोशन क्यों कहते हैं लेट्स मेक अ डायग्राम 
the diagram this is the circular path in which a body is traveling so we have different spots here let's say this is a spot a this is the spot b this is the spot c and this is the spot d now as the question says that it is uniform circular motion so that is why the body will be moving with a constant speed so let's assume that the speed at spot a is 30 meter per second now since this is a uniform motion so at every spot the speed would be 30 meter per second at every spot the speed would be 30 meter per second but at the same time you have to remember one very tricky thing that in case of a circular motion at every point the direction of a body is changing and what is the direction how can we determine what is the direction the direction is actually in the tangential direction so you can see this is the direction of the body these are the tangents and in this direction the body will continue to move so no matter what magnitude of speed uh, a body is having its direction at every point will be different and since the direction is changing velocity is a vector quantity that means it is having magnitude as well as direction so since the direction is changing we'll consider that the velocity at every point will be changing and since there is a change in velocity with respect to time we'll also say that the body is under acceleration in case of a uniform circular motion okay so i hope you all have understood the concept let's move on to the next question i hope we are not getting very, we are not going very fast let's move on to the next question the question says a person is walking around a square field of side 10 meter find the distance and displacement if he travels 1 1 and 1/2 and 2 rounds okay so this is the square field uh, one second this is actually a rectangle let's make a square this is a square field and the side is 10 meters we have to calculate the distance and displacement traveled by the body in 1 1 and 1/2 and 2 rounds so first let's calculate the distance let's calculate the distance now you see this outer periphery you see this outer periphery this is what we need to calculate because isi path pe body move kar rahi hogi and that will be the value of the distance now if you see this outer periphery how can we calculate this is equals to 4 times side okay this is equals to 4 times side so that means distance traveled by the body in one round will be equal to 4 multiplied by 10 which is equals to 40 meters so now you can easily calculate if in one round the body is traveling 40 meters how many meters it will uh, uh, travel in one and a half and two rounds this is for you to solve now let's move on to the displacement part in case of the displacement if it is completing the round theek hai jis point se shuru kiya tha agar usi point pe wapas aa gaya so that means the displacement of that body will be zero so in the question of one round and two round the displacement of the body will be equal to zero now let's see what will be the displacement in case of one and a half round okay so first the body would have completed one round so the displacement would be zero now again the body is traveling half round so that means the body is moving from this point a to this point c and this is the shortest path which we need to calculate now if you notice this is actually a right angle triangle and by using the pythagoras theorem we can get this value of ac now this ac square is equals to 10 square plus 10 square so that means ac is equals to under root 100 plus 100 so this is the final answer the displacement in one and a half round is equals to under root 200 meters okay so this is what we need to calculate and this is it this was the last question i hope you all have done maximum question you all can do your self analysis how many questions you have done and that's all for today now we'll meet in the next video thank you everyone and have a wonderful day